found in God's presence. Amen. Good morning and welcome to New Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church on this last Sunday in July in the year of our Lord 2022. We have a wonderful worship experience planned for you today. Let me give you just a couple of comments, of course. Uh, it's good to see so many of you have already joined us on Facebook as well as on YouTube. And we thank everybody that's joined us here vert, uh, in person in the sanctuary. Um, first of all, the likes, the loves, and the shares. Thank you so very much for you who know how to share now. You've been sharing with your family and friends on Facebook so that they will be able to worship with us this morning. I um, want to thank everybody that came out the fun day yesterday. Boy, we had a bunch of fun. We had water slides and bounce houses and food and watermelon. <laughs> Amen. Had a good time in the name of the Lord. Thank of all of our um, planners. Uh, we had a bunch of people from our Back to Church Committee that were helping out yesterday. We had a bunch of people from the city that came and lent a hand, and we're really appreciative to, to all of them. Uh, this afternoon at 2 o'clock, uh, I see that Geraldine, Geraldine Curry is already on. Her big sister, we're having a birthday drive-by for her this afternoon at 2 o'clock. And that's going to be at 112, I believe that's 112 Chalk Street. I might be wrong, but it's in Chalk Quarters. Can't miss it. Amen. We'll be up there at 2 o'clock showering her with presents and with gifts. Amen. And then on tomorrow night, our Social Action, Social Justice Committee from the New Bethel Church, as well as United Gadsden, as well as Faith in Florida, we're sponsoring the first of two candidate forums. Uh, tomorrow night at 630, we'll be here in the sanctuary. If you're in town and you want to come out and you want to ask questions or you just want to see who the candidates are, uh, both for a county commission as well as for school board, uh, we're going to have uh, that presentation on tomorrow night right here in the sanctuary. And then uh, it'll also be streamed, not on the New Bethel page, it'll be streamed, and I'll get you that information uh, posted on our New Bethel group page. Amen. That's tomorrow night at 630. Uh, and then on Tuesday night, our leadership team meets, our stewards and trustees at 630 on Tuesday night. On Wednesday night, boy, we are having a good time in the name of the Lord uh, with John, the third chapter, the conversation with Nicodemus. We're on John 316. We breached that subject last week, and we'll continue this week. God so loved the world. I think that's uh, Adrian Kelly's favorite scripture. Okay, and then uh, on Thursday night, on Thursday night, we have the second uh, series of candidate forums. This will be for the District 8 seat. And there are four candidates running for that seat. Uh, and that will be by way of Streamlabs. Uh, that will be shown by way of Streamlabs. That's on Thursday night at 6.30 as well. All right, next Sunday is Communion Sunday. So get with your class leaders to make sure that you get your communion kits for next week uh, if you do not already have them. We get this worship service started out this morning. Uh, with a friend and brother of ours from high school, uh, Brother Ephraim Bryant will be praying for us this morning. And then our praise team is going to come singing, I'm going through. Amen. I'm going through. I ain't staying. I'm going through. Wonderful counselor, Prince of Peace, Father God. It is in the holy and righteous name of your own beloved Son, Jesus Christ, that we kneel before your throne of grace this morning with bowed heads and humble hearts. Thanking you, Father God, for this another day's journey. Father God, we thank you for last night's sleep, that it wasn't unto death. Thank you, Father God, for calling us forth into a new day, one in which we never seen before, Father God, and one we never see again. But, Father God, we say thank you. Father God, we thank you for your renewed mercies and your renewed grace and your everlasting love. Father God, we thank you that when you woke us up this morning, you closed us in a sound mind and a sound body and a right mind for the portion of health and strength and activities of our limbs. And Father God, for that, we say thank you. Father God, thank you for food, shelter, and clothing this day, Father God. Father God, this is the day that you have made. I that you help us to rejoice and be glad in it. In the almighty, holy, and righteous name of Jesus, we pray. Father God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge your presence, and we welcome you into our homes and into every area of our lives. 
asking that you continue to take your board with us, rest you and abide in us and with us, lead, guide, and directing us, forever teaching us, Holy Spirit, and bringing all things back to our remember that we need to know doing so according to the word of God. Father God, we praise your holy and righteous name and lift the name on high, for your name is the name above every name, and let the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. He's Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Father God, you're the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. You are the Most High God. You're the God who was, God who is, and is to come. And Father God, for that we say thank you. Father God, your mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. You're God who sits outside of time, but hold time in your hand. And Father God, we thank you when that time be with us as well as it is. We thank you when that things be as well as they are in all our lives. In the almighty, holy, and righteous name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for being a just, loving, and mercy, and forgiving God. A God who slowed to anger, but a God who plenteous in mercy. And Father God, for that we say thank you. Father God, you're a God who said high, but you look low, you see all, you know all. You hold all in your holy and righteous hand. And Father God, for that we say thank you. Father God, there's nothing about us that's hidden from you. For we know that we all have sinned and come short of your glory and all our righteousness. It says, fear the rest in your sight. But Father God, you said in your word, if we confess our sin, your faith and just forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Father God, in Jesus' name, I ask you please forgive us for all our manifold sins and wickedness that we most grievously committed against you and in your sight by thought, word, and deed, sins of omission and sins of commission. In the name of Jesus, even those sins we're not aware that we are committed, Father God, we ask that you have mercy in a special and mighty way. Father God, we we thank you for your word, for your word is true, your word is everlasting, your word shall forever stand. Father God, we know everything going down but your word. Your word shall not go out and come back void, but it shall accomplish that which you please. And Father God, for that we say thank you. Father God, we ask that you help to take your word and hide it in our heart that we may not sin against you, Father God. Father God, we ask that you help to take your word and write upon the tablet of our heart and bind about our faith that may be held to our whole flesh in the almighty, holy, and righteous name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for our children this morning. Father God, we ask that you continue to bless our children in the name of Jesus. For Father God, you send in your word to suffer little children to come unto you. Forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And Father God, you said to rear these children up in the way that you will have them to go, Lord God. That when, you, when they grow old, they won't depart from your will nor your ways. And Father God, for this we say thank you. And Father God, Lord, I ask that you keep your hands upon our lives and ear, ear our lives, Father God. I ask that you continue to establish our going out and our coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Father God, I remember those that are jail by, prison by, hospitalized, those in the nursing home, those in the commonwealth home, and those in their home alone. Father God, I should remember the afflicted, the sick, the shut in, the bereaved, and the birth and throughout this world, Father God. Father God, I should remember all those who would do the bound to pray for, Father God, and all those that stand in need of prayer. Have mercy, we pray, Father God, in a special and mighty way. Father God, I ask that you help the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous man their thoughts and turn to you, Father God, that you would pardon their sins in the name of Jesus. And Father God, Lord, we ask that you take out the stony hearts and the hard hearts and put in the heart of flesh that we can serve and please you in the newness of life, Father God, to the honor and glory of your name. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray, Father God, we ask that you purge us with his and make us clean, Lord God, wash us and make us to heal. Joy and gladness that the bone which you have broken may rejoice. In the almighty, holy, and righteous name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Father God, for being an ever present God in the time of trouble. For, Father God, your word says, Be anxious for nothing but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, that our request be made known to you, and your peace which surpasses all understanding, with God our hearts and minds, through Christ Jesus. And Father God, for this I say thank you. Father God, help us to keep our hearts and minds stayed on you in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Oh, Father God, we don't know what tomorrow will bring, but one thing we can be for sure, you change not. And Father God, for that we say thank you. Father God, I should to continue to act that you continue to be our defense and refuge in the day of trouble. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, I ask that you help us to be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth in good, bringing forth in good fruits in this season. And Father God, that in whatever we do, we prosper as our souls prosper. In the almighty, holy, and righteous name of Jesus. But Father God, your word say, eyes have not seen, nor have ears heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man. The good thing, Father God, that you have for us. And Father God, for that I say thank you. Father God, shall we continue to look to the hill for which you come into our help. For all our help come from you, Father God, who made heaven and earth and everything in it. Father God, for that I say thank you. But Father God, your word said the healing is the children's bread. And I that you heal us, O Lord God, and we shall be healed. Save us, O Lord, and we shall be saved. For you, Father God, are our praise. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Father God, your word said your grace is sufficient, and I ask in Jesus' name that your power be made strong. 
that your power be made perfect, even in our weakness, Father God, in our almighty, holy, and righteous name of Jesus. Father God, continue to hold us up with your right victorious right hand in the mighty and message name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for your faithfulness in all our lives. In our time of grief and sorrow, Father God, we thank you for keeping your hands upon our lives and the air air our lives. Father God, we thank you for helping us to cast our cares upon you, for you care for us, for you said in your word, your yoke is easy and your burdens are light. And Father God, for this we say thank you. Father God, in Jesus' name, thank you for your people. Thank you that your people can have access into your presence where we can find joy, strength, peace, and all that we need. Father God, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, your word said that our strength is your joy. And Father God, we just thank you for our strength being the joy of the Lord. Father God, in Jesus' name I pray, Lord God, that you bless everywhere, Lord Jesus, Lord, save everywhere. Father God, you pour out your Holy Spirit upon this world, that souls can be saved, hearts can be fixed, mind can be changed, people can be delivered, restored, and set free. But Father God, your words are who the Son has set free, is free indeed. Father God, we thank you for being a promise keeper. Father God, we thank you for being light and darkness in this dark world. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we have to continue to establish our going out and our coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. Father God, you order our steps in your word, Lord God, you continue to keep us safe from the virus and anything else that's not like it, Father God. In the almighty, holy, and righteous name of Jesus, Father God, you said you sent your word to heal us. But Father God, you said in your word you were wounded for our transgressions, you were bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement, our peace is upon you, Father God, and with your stripes we are healed. So Father God, we thank you for your healing power. In the almighty, holy, and righteous name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you for your Holy Ghost power. We thank you for your saving power. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray, Lord God. Thank you for Pastor Morris and New Bethel Church family, Father God, that you bless them only the way that you can bless them, Father God. You keep them only the way that you can keep them. These are now all blessings we pray in asking that son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
block me Cause I'm going through I'm going through Yes, I'm going through Yes, I'm going through Do I have a witness? Do you want to go right through? Yes, I'm going through I'm going through I'm going through Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. If you're going through, amen. I'm going through it, boy, but I'm going through it, too. Amen. That's a good shouting song right there. Amen. I want to thank Sister Gloria McSwain for that powerful scriptural prayer. Uh, I want to thank Travis Lagan, our musician, uh, Sheila Washington, uh, Sister Sharon Holt Harris and Vicki Campbell. Amen for blessing us with that song, boy. I'm going through. I'm going through. Amen. It is time now for us to give uh, to God. We don't come to God empty handed. And I never show up at a worship service that I ain't blessing the Lord with something in my hand. So uh, now it's time for our tithe and offering. Thanks so many of you who have already given to your class leaders, uh, given to the Back to Church Committee. And then if you are giving online today, they're going to put some information on the screen for you uh, for electronic giving as well as for uh, mailing in your gifts. And let me not forget to thank those who are mailing in their gifts. They still get here. Amen. Um, if you're giving by way of Givelify, that information should be New Bethel AME Church, New Bethel AME Church. If you're giving by way of Cash App, that should be Cash Tag uh, New Bethel Quincy, number one, Cash Tag New Bethel Quincy. And if you're giving by snail mail, that post office box is post office box 634, Quincy, Florida, Three two three five three, three two three five three, and let's pray over our offerings. Almighty God and Savior, we're just so thankful that you have blessed us to be a blessing to others. We thank you, Lord God, that we are part of a church, part of a ministry, Lord God, that intentionally goes about helping others. We thank you, Lord God, for the mind and the vision of the New Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church that we are able to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and spirit, and then we're able to love our neighbors like we love our own selves. So, Lord God, we ask you to continue to bless us so that we can be a blessing to this community. In Jesus' name we pray, hallelujah, and amen. Amen, amen. Let the church say amen. 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 Uh, I thank the, um, the males. Amen. Good to see you, Sister Deborah. I already spoke to her brother Wendell and Sister Harden and Sister Miller. It's Miller time at New Bethel Church. Good to see you here, a nurse. And then Adrian Kelly. And then uh, Elijah, I wanted to point out Elijah Williamson because uh, without him yesterday, he did a lot of the grunt work, the sweat work yesterday, so thank him. And then, of course, our media team leader, uh, Brother Al Jones. And let me see, uh, I, we have uh, Sister Sharon Zander, Sister Cynthia Hagens, and Sister Sharon Holt Harris as part of our Back to Church Committee this morning. Won't you just give them some love emojis? And if you're in the house, just give them a big hand of praise. <laughs> praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. Well, all right, we can't <laughs> the praise to you coming back to wreck the house. They're going to be singing this time, down here waiting, down here waiting. Amen. Down here, and I'm waiting 
Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Quarter to his riches and glory. Amen. He shall supply my every need. That's a good song there. Again, uh, thank you. Vicki Campbell, lead on that one. Sheila Washington, Sister Sharon Old Harris, and then, of course, Travis Lagan. That's some good old-fashioned singing there, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Just warms our hearts and fills our spirit with song. Amen. Amen. Uh, we want to uh, direct your attention today in this sermonic series that we have going on. This will be the fourth installment from the Jewish jukebox. Um, this morning we're coming from the 100th Psalm, and we just want to entitle this one, uh, Makes Me Want to Shout, Makes Me Want to Shout. This is from Psalm 100. Won't you pray with us? Almighty God, we need your Holy Spirit. Breathe on us. Fill us with your power so that the words from these lips of clay, the meditations of this heart of dust, might be pleasing in your sight. You are my rock, my strength, and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. From the 100th Psalm, and this is from the New International Version, might read a little bit differently from your translation. It says in the New International Version, shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge the Lord is God. He made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues to all generations. Amen. Makes me want to shout. The song Shout, which we tag our text today, was a major hit by the Isley Brothers back in the day in 1959. Now, I know some of y'all too young to remember that, too young to remember Ronald, Rudolph, and Kelly Isley, but they turned that thing out. Go watch it on YouTube, boy. I mean, Ronald, he does a split in the middle of the song. Boy, that's a good song. Uh, you may not remember Ronald, Rudolph, and Kelly, but you might remember in uh, 1978, and that's when uh, uh, the, the popular mu uh, movie Animal House came out, and uh, you remember uh, uh, Belushi, they, they, they were doing the toga party, and they had Oldest Day in the Nights performing at the infamous toga party. The song had very simple lyrics that spoke of puppy love from a childhood sweetheart that grew into a full-blown true love as an adult. The writer was so grateful, so thankful, so ecstatic about his love, he expresses it like this. You know, it makes me want to shout, come on now, shout, come on. Oh, 
Okay, y'all too young. Hey, <laughs> throw your hands up, throw your hands back. Whoa, whoa. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and likewise, the songwriter of Psalm 100 encourages us, commands us to shout. Somebody just say, shout. shout. No, somebody shout, shout. <laughs> Amen. And put that in your text box if you're at home. Because the art of shouting and giving thanks is one thing that distinguishes the human experience. To receive a gift and say thank you is one of the noblest things a person can do. There's uh, nothing small or trivial about it. To say thank you is to acknowledge that we have been given something that we did not earn and we do not deserve. And, and perhaps, perhaps that's why Paul instructed the believers at Thessalonica Thessalonica in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 8, he encourages them by saying, in everything, give thanks. Because when, uh, when we can't do anything else, we can always be grateful and shout. I'm reminded of these two men who were walking home and they decided to take a shortcut across another man's farm. Uh, they were walking across his land when all of a sudden they got, they caught out of the corner of their eye the sight of the man's bull running towards them at full speed. Terrified, they both took off running and the bull was in hot pursuit. And, and running into a state of panic, they ran the wrong way and ended up cornered by an eight-foot wall. One man quickly looked at the other and said, that bull is mad and we're cornered and you better throw up a quick prayer if you know how to pray. His friend said, well, you know, I ain't never prayed in public before, but, but, and I don't know any, what to say. And his friend said, you better think of something quick. And the man said, Lord, make us truly thankful for what we're about to receive. <laughs> Y'all will get that later. Yeah. The point is, uh, when you can't do anything else, you can always be grateful. Somebody just say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I believe all of us need to create a list of things for which we are thankful. Have you got a Thanksgiving list? Because the truth is, we are often long on petition, but short on praising. Long on complaint, but short on celebration. Long on grumbling, but short on gratitude. Uh, uh, but how long is your thanksgiving list? Have you ever taken time to count your blessings? Because one writer said, if you can't be thankful for what you've received, just be thankful for what you have escaped. <laughs> and I'm preaching to some people right now who can give God praise for both what you have received and for what you have escaped. And, and that's the encouragement we unearth in the text for today because this psalm is a psalm of thanksgiving for both what the writer had received and for what the writer had escaped. Selected from the jukebox playlist of ancient Israel, this song encourages you and I to join with the songwriter to shout, to bless, to magnify, and to praise the name of our God. He arouses us in the King James Version to make a joyful noise to the Lord, to serve the Lord, to know the Lord, and then joins with the rest of the songwriters in providing us with a surplus surplus of reasons why praise is appropriate. We praise God because he is God. We, we praise God because he is great. Because God made us and not we ourselves. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. We praise God because God is good and his mercy is everlasting. His faithfulness and love continues to every generation. 
we, we are later instructed to praise God for his mighty acts, for, for his excellent greatness. And if none of that speaks to your everyday experience, the very last song in the Hebrew hymn book encourage us, encourages us that everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. So if you ain't got no money, you ain't got no honey, as long as you got breath, you are incited and invited to praise ye the Lord. Yeah, just look at your neighbor and say, you breathing over there, ain't you? Yeah, don't have us call 911 up in here. Yeah, encourage them. Say, go on in and praise the Lord. What you waiting on? Amen. The psalm is a song of praise that begins with a directive to shout. And for somebody listening to me right now, that's all you need. Because you have experienced the faithfulness of God. You have seen God show up, show off, and show out. You have witnessed new mercies. You have been rescued by grace. God has made you a promise, and then he's kept his word. God's word has not returned to God void. Whatever God said, God did. Whatever God spoke, God brought to pass. And somebody sitting in your seat right now can testify in spite of what the devil said, in spite of what the devil did, God has been faithful to me. Somebody say hallelujah right now. In spite of what your enemies wished on you and what your haters thought about you, God preserved your life. And so it's not a strain nor a challenge for you to shout for joy because somebody is saying in their spirit right now, you know, Pastor, I don't need no music. I don't need no spiritual cheerleaders. It don't, I don't need no pom-pom praises. Just give me the opportunity and I'll celebrate. I'll give thanks. I'll shout glory to God because God has been just that good, just that merciful, just that kind. Hallelujah. Shout. And I want you to know I joined with you because I too am a recipient of the grace of God. I too have received the mercy of God. I too have been blessed in the city. I've been blessed in the field. I've been blessed when I came out and blessed when I went back in. My family has been blessed. My church has been blessed. My friends have been blessed. And I got news, my enemies have been blessed. And therefore, out of everybody, who could and should give thanks to God, you could put my name at the top of that list. Somebody just say, sign my name on that list. Amen. If you're at home, just type that in. Sign my name on the praise list. That's right. And if you don't want to praise him, if you don't want to thank him, if you don't want to rejoice, don't hinder me. Because when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Just makes me want to shout, come on, y'all. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> See, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I'd be. Yeah, I got a long Thanksgiving list, and it's not just filled with material possessions. Hear me. I'm past the point now where I'm thanking him for cars and for clothes and for cash. No, I, I got a thanksgiving list now for, for life, for health, for strength, for the activity of my limbs, for waking me up this morning, starting me on my way, for being in my right mind. For my family and my friends and my loved ones, I'm thankful for my church. I'm thankful for my salvation. I'm thankful for God's mercy and God's grace and for God's favor. 
Where's Kirk Cobb when you need him? I got so much to be thankful for. So many wonderful blessings. So many open doors. A brand new mercy each and every day. That's why I praise him. For every mountain, he's brought me over. For every trial, he's seen me through. I'm going through. For every blessing, hallelujah. For this, I give him praise. See, when you have God in your life, you have so much in which to be thankful for. You got his presence, you got his power, and you got his promises available to you every single day of your life. God is faithful and God is true. You can count on God. You can rely on God. You can depend on God. Even with inflation, he's your refuge. He's your present help in the time of trouble. G.B. Kaufman once said, God is the only one who could hold in perfect tension two paradoxical parallels. Let me explain. God has no start and no finish. That's a paradox. God sits high and looks low. That's a paradox. God is alpha and omega, the first and the last, the beginning of the end. That's a paradox. But my grandmama broke that thing down for me when she said, you know, he's, he's bread when you're hungry. He's a battle axe in the time of the battle. Shelter in the time of the storm. Lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon, bright and morning star. We got a whole lot to be thankful for. Makes me want to shout. Come on now, shout. Come on now. Hey, 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 hey. Oh. Yeah, go on, say to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor he ain't telling nothing but the truth now, boy. Amen. Somebody text that. I know that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and one of the dangerous temptations that all of us face during this season is to focus only on what we have and not on who we are. But can I tell you something? What you have can change at any moment. But who you are abides and continues and endures and that's what the emphasis of the 100th Psalm is. This Psalm is all about the goodness of God and our response to his goodness. And, and it's telling the teachers that the basis of our thanksgiving in the moment is not our things, but it's all about God. It's not something, but it's somebody that we give praise to. We give praise, we give glory because of who God is and what God has done. At Alex Haley, you might remember that name, the author of Roots, I mean Roots. M maybe you read that book and certainly you saw the miniseries. He had this unusual painting uh, in his office. It was a picture of a turtle sitting on a fence post. Can you see that? in your sanctified mind, a turtle on top of a fence post. And when the interviewer asked him, why is that hanging up there? Alex Haley would always answer, every time I write something significant, every time I read my own words and think they're wonderful and begin to feel cocky and proud of myself, I look at that turtle on top of that fence post and I'm reminded he ain't get up there by himself. Somebody's, yeah, somebody smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go on and put some smileys up in, uh, yeah, just cast some smiley emojis on there. Yeah, because you see, if a turtle is sitting on a fence post, it's only because he has some help. And that's the basis of our praise because we realize we didn't get here on our own. We didn't survive on our own. We are who we are, where we are, by the grace 
of Almighty God. Is there anybody listening who don't mind testifying that God has been my help? God has been my healer. God has been my joy in sorrow, my hope for tomorrow. He's been my life. He's been my heart fixer. He's been my mind regulator. He's been my protection, my peace, my provision. It should make you want to shout. tells us how to respond to the goodness of God. Because first, what I want you to notice is that we are commanded to shout. Yeah, just look at your neighbor and say, it ain't even optional. Yeah, put that in the chat space, optional. A-O-P-T-I-O-N-A-L, optional. No option. No, 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 no. Verse 1 says, in the imperative tense, it says, shout for joy, all the earth. Shout for joy. It means to shout with the force of a trumpet blast. Offer a shout to God that comes from the very depths of your being. It doesn't have to do, it, it, it doesn't have to be cute. It doesn't have to be dainty. It doesn't have to be appropriate. In fact, the King James Version says, just make a joyful noise unto the Lord. That, that suggests that it don't even have to make sense to anybody around you or near you uh, as long as you know when you think about how God has provided for you, how God has protected you, about how God has been a present help in your time of struggles and storms, that is the reason to shout. You can't allow people who ain't going nowhere to keep you from going somewhere because your praise, your shout is not between you and them, it's between you and him. The place of blessing is too precarious for us to misunderstand how we got there. You got to know it was God who made you and God who has maintained you. God sustained you and kept you and made a way for you out of no way. And if you don't mind, somebody just say, nobody but God. Put that in your chat space, nobody but God. Ah, there's a story that I read about Roland Allen. Roland Allen tells a story about a, a veteran missionary who approached, uh, uh, after somebody approached him after preaching a sermon. And the missionary introduced himself as uh, the medical missionary who has served many years in a remote part of India. He said, I served in a region with a plague of progressive blindness that broke out among all the people. The people who had been born with healthy vision were now being afflicted by this virus and it was being spread so much so that it caused people to lose their sight. And as they grew older, he said that God blessed me to discover a treatment that would stop the progressive blindness. So people would come to him and he would administer the treatment, and they would leave, realizing that they would have become completely and totally blind, but because of him, their sight had been saved. He went on to point out uh, to Roland Allen that the people never said thank you, because that phrase was not a part of their dialect. He said instead, they spoke a word in their own language which meant, I will tell him, I will tell your name. And whenever, uh, wherever they went, they would tell the name of the missionary who had cured their blindness and saved their sight. Now, I must confess, I don't know the name of that missionary, but I do want y'all to know, I do know a name. I know somebody who gave me sight when I was blind, hope when I was in despair. I know somebody who's been my strength when I was weak, 
who's been my voice when I couldn't speak, my eyes when I couldn't see. He took me up the rough side of the mountain. He brought me out the very best in me. He lifted me. I would when I couldn't reach up for myself and gave me faith to believe I'm everything I am because God loved me. And if you know God loves you, then go ahead and shout. Come on. Is there anybody listening to me right now who knows what I mean? Who don't mind giving God a shout just because he's been that good? That's the reason to shout. But the psalmist goes on to say that our shout is just the beginning because we are not only commanded to shout, we are also commanded to serve. Somebody clap, clap back at me and say, serve. Yeah. The songwriter says, serve the Lord with gladness. And notice, it doesn't say serve the church. It doesn't say serve the pastor. It says serve the Lord. Now, don't get it twisted. Amen. That means if somebody hurts your feelings, if somebody mad at you, if you mad at somebody else, somebody getting on your last black nerve, don't let it block you from serving the Lord. If it ain't between you and another member or even you and the pastor. You ought to serve the Lord. See, God is always processing, promoting, and pruning us because God knows all of us are prone to become settled and satisfied only to end up sterile and stayed and stale. God has saved us to serve, not to sit and stare and soak and sour, but to serve. And we are to serve not out of guilt or obligation or even for applause and accolades. We are to serve God out of gratitude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody, anybody ought to just be grateful for what God has done in your life. Let the whole church say gratitude. All right, put that in the chat face. Gratitude, yeah. Because there is nothing that has ever happened to you that God cannot make work for you. Y'all missed that. And when you get this right, you will realize, like my friend Dr. Hill pointed out in Bible study, that our trials are an ally to our perfection and not an obstruction to our peace. That says it's done. So no matter what the situation, you can function with expectation that God is always in control. So despite my current situation, I'm going to believe and behave like that where I am is not where I'm going to wind up. I'm going to behave based on what I know that God has in purpose for me and where I'm headed. Okay, let me see if I can help you. Eugene Genovese in his book, Roll Jordan Roll pointed out that one of the reasons that slavery did not work for Africans in America is because Africans did not believe that their daily existing reality was their ultimate destiny. They, they knew that they had eternal life. So no matter what was going on in the present, they had something to look forward to. They didn't believe that where they were was where they were meant to be. So even though their lives were chaotic and their culture and family had been ripped apart, they still held on every single day to the hope that there would, there would be a brighter day and a brighter side somewhere. Yeah. The tragedy of so many people in this hour is that we have become our situation. Can I talk to you? You got to learn how to find comfort being the contradiction to your condition. <laughs> I just said something. Yeah. You are not what you're going through. You, 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 
you don't even make it a stage in life or a state of mind. Yeah, just because you're going through it does not mean you are destined to stay in it. Yeah, don't make a stage into a state because a stage becomes a state when you adopt habits that disqualify you from your next level. Preach, pastor. I'm already doing that one. Serve the Lord with gladness because the church, the church, the church of Jesus Christ is just like a toolbox and all of us are just tools in God's tool kit. Somebody just type, you an instrument. If you're in the church, just say, you an instrument. Yeah. See, according to God's sovereign design, God has chosen us as instruments to affect his kingdom purpose. And there are no two tools with the same function. But there are an assortment of instruments that are designed to perform a variety of functions. All of us are created with a special goal in mind. God has a mission for every single one of us because we were made to contribute and not just consume. God made us to make a difference, and therefore, it doesn't matter how long you live. It don't matter how well you live. What counts is not the duration of your life, but the donation of your life. Because wherever God enlists you to do, whenever God enlists you for his service, God will empower you to do just what God wants you to do. In Job chapter 10, verse 8. Job declared, your hand shaped me and made me. God has not given anybody everything, but he has given everybody something. And, and if you believe that, just say, I got a little something, something. <laughs> Amen. See, the God distinctively shapes us so God might uniquely share us. Your gifts are not just for your gain, but God bless you so you could turn around and bless somebody else. We're commanded to shout. We're commanded to serve. And if you read on, we're commanded to sing. Boy, I can't wait to get to this part of the sermon. Come on, act like you earth, wind, and fire and say, sing a song. Yeah, put that in the chat page. Sing a song. It's right there. Right there in verse 3, it says, every time you come into his presence, you ought to come singing. It's in the text. We are commanded to sing because singing is one of the primary ways that we worship God. That's why we're talking about the Jewish jukebox. 150 songs collected over a thousand years right there in the hymn book. In the King James Version, the psalm begins saying, make a joyful noise. Unto the Lord. Can I tell you something? That I think you already know. But we need to be reminded. The church is not an entertainment venue. The church, both in here and virtually online, is an engagement vehicle. <laughs> tell the truth. Tell the truth now. How many times? Have you heard this choir sing like they did this morning? And our musicians play out of the depths of their hearts. And some people don't, he don't even have an expression on their face. They ain't saying hallelujah. They ain't even looking hallelujah. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, don't look over here now. He ain't talking about me. <laughs> Seriously, does your neighbor look like they got any joy? Have they been singing with thanksgiving? Do they have an exuberant praise? Or are they just sit going through the motion with no praise on their lips, no hallelujah in their spirit, no joy in their heart, no smile on their face? If you got joy in your heart, you ought to let your heart tell your face all about it. Because the scripture says sing. And the thing I love about it in this song is that it don't even have to be in tune when you're singing. 
It don't have to be on pitch. It don't even have to be harmonious. It only has to be a joyful noise. Yeah. Somebody just say, make a noise. We're commanded to shout. We're commanded to serve. We're commanded to sing. And I just wonder if I got about 75 people online who can just type in, praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. When you consider how profoundly you have been blessed, how graciously you have been kept, God has been good to every single one of us. He blesses us with health and strength, with life and breath, with family and friends, potential and possibility, with provisions and promise. Our mouths, our hearts ought to be filled with song. When we consider all God has done for us, how freely we have been forgiven, how richly we have been blessed, how thoroughly we have been redeemed, we have reason to be grateful right now. When we think about how God has brought victory out of struggle, brought purpose out of our pain, brought healing out of our hurts, reconciliation out of our ruin, Sanity out of our stress and deliverance out of our difficulty, then unprompted, unprovoked, we ought to give God not only thanksgiving, but all the glory, all the honor, all the credit, all the praise. It ought to make you want to shout, come on now, shout, come on now, shout, come on now. A little softer now, a little softer now, a little louder now, a little louder now. Shout, shout, come on now, shout, shout, come on now, shout. Hallelujah. It ought to make you want to shout. Hallelujah. That's our word for today. We thank God for you listening in, for tuning in, and for being in worship. And now... It calls for a response. Anytime the word of God goes out, God says it cannot return void until it accomplishes its purpose. And we pray that purpose this morning will be for someone to develop a relationship with Jesus Christ as both your Lord and as your Savior. They're putting some numbers on the screen right now. That number is 850-296-7367. All you got to do is just text. If you ain't got to come down the aisle, you can if you're in the worship room. You can come down here. We'll let you know all about Jesus Christ. How he saved you, how he kept you. And all those times you were wondering, how can this be? Can I tell you how it could be? Because God was looking for you every step of the way. So, 850-296-7367. Just type Jesus if you want to know more about Jesus. Type join, J-O-I-N if you want to join our fellowship. Now's the time, right now. Today. Just come. Hallelujah. Nothing better. Thank you for gathering with us today. We thank you for your shouts and your amens. Amen. At this time, if our hearts are clear, remember, next Sunday is our first Sunday, our communion Sunday, so make sure you get your communion kits ready for next week. Uh, we pray that you will join us for the Canada Forum. And tomorrow night, we will be trustees to meet on Tuesday night. If you want to know more about God for yourself, Join us on Wednesday night for our Bible study. And then on Thursday, the Canada Forum for Christian Faith Campus. Amen. Let's stand on our feet. This afternoon, we'll be at our sister Elizabeth Higgins' house in Stark Quarters for a birthday celebration. 
2 o'clock p.m. Praise God. From a long time. to another and now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with you now and forever let the church say amen Amen. Give God some praise right where you are. Amen. We thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll see you next week. I love you. I love you. I love you. And you know I love you. God bless you real good. Amen. Thank you all shouters up in the house this morning. <laughs>